So, dear uh, uh, brothers uh, in Christ, uh, last week uh, we studied about uh, type and anti-type. Uh, Brother Ashish took you into the subject of uh, type and anti-type. So, what is the meaning of uh, type and anti-type in the Bible? We have seen. So, it uh, clearly shows uh, uh, all the things which are written in the Old Testament, uh, like a mirror to us which reflects uh, and tells uh, so many things uh, about uh, the things which are going to happen in the New Testament. So, uh, therefore, uh, we see that all the things uh, written in the Old Testament are actually a significance of the things uh, which happen uh, in the New Testament, uh, and particularly about our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And last week, you have definitely seen this example of uh, Abraham and uh, Isaac. So, where Abraham offered his uh, only son uh, Isaac and uh, uh, God uh, protected Isaac and gave him back to Abraham. So, similarly, God uh, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus uh, as a sacrifice. And in return, uh, you see uh, that uh, you see Jesus was resurrected from the dead. So, here we can see all these uh, beautiful things. Uh, and uh, definitely, uh, brother would have told you about uh, uh, how uh, Isaac uh, marriage uh, happened. Now Rebecca was uh, found by Eliezer. So all these things we have seen that are uh, these uh, pictures are wonderful. Uh, you see the gospel uh, uh, age. Okay. Now, if so many things uh, uh, signify uh, so many things about Christ, uh, about Abraham's life. You see, Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Rebecca, if all these things have significance, then surely uh, Abraham's wife also must be having significance. Because we read in the Bible that uh, Abraham married three wives. It is Sarah, Hagar, and Keturah. So, what are uh, these uh, three wives of uh, Abraham? And what does this uh, signify? So, if you see uh, in the Bible, uh, we see that Abraham loved uh, Sarah very much. So even after uh, so many years of, uh, you see, a relationship uh, did not have any uh, child at all. So as the days went on, Abraham and Sarah were getting old and old. So as uh, uh, days were passing on, Sarah thought uh, that it is not good uh, to be like this. Then uh, she wanted to have a heir. She wanted, she wanted to have a son. So she compelled an Egyptian servant by name Hagar to marry uh, Abraham and beget a child. So it is after the compulsion of Sarah that, uh, uh, you see, Abraham agreed to marry Hagar, an Egyptian servant. So as soon as they were married, you see, immediately a son was born and his name was named as Ishmael. But... Uh, even after the birth of Ishmael, God never, uh, you see, uh, forgot his promise. The original promise which God had made to Abraham, that in thy seed shall all the nations of this world be blessed. So, even after the birth of, uh, you see, Ishmael, God again promised and reminded uh, the same promise to Abraham and Sarah that uh, you are now 100 years old and Sarah 90 years old and they shall have a child at this, uh, you see, moment, Abraham could not control his joy and laughter. Since uh, he began to, you see, laugh uh, uh, by falling, uh, you see, on the ground and laughed and laughed. Uh, That's because of joy and, you see, happiness. Uh, that even at this old age, God would keep his promise. Uh, so, exactly as God promised, uh, Isaac was born. So, Isaac was a wonderful and a beautiful child. And Abraham loved him so much and nurtured him very well in, uh, you see, God's path. And uh, as uh, Isaac was growing, uh, they began to breed, you see, jealousy among Ishmael and uh, Isaac. So there was a, uh, you see, family quarrel and Ishmael used to tease and rag Isaac. And this was not uh, tolerable for uh, Sarah at all. So Sarah... Uh, demanded uh, that Abraham uh, divorce uh, Hagar and send them both away. So it was very difficult for Abraham to take this decision. But after uh, 
you see much compulsion from Sarah. You see, Abraham sent her Hagar and uh, Ishmael away. But while sending away, he did not give any, uh, you see, a portion of the property. He did not give them any wealth. Uh, he gave them just a few loaves of bread and a little bit of water uh, to sustain in the wilderness. So it was very difficult time for both of them. Whatever food they had, whatever water they had, uh, until it was with them, uh, they could, uh, you see, sustain and they could, uh, you see, just pass over. But uh, uh, when everything got exhausted, uh, you see, when the child was at the verge of death, uh, so Hagar had no option but to pray to the Lord to save uh, her son. And that was the time that when she was uh, uh, praying to the Lord, that almost the death of his son, God, uh, you see, sent an angel. And the angel, you see, up, uh, appeared uh, to Hagar and, uh, you see, and uh, showed her a fountain of water. And it is because of that water uh, that uh, Ishmael drank and revived and uh, Ishmael was also blessed uh, to be a eh? called tribe nation. Dear brethren, all these things are given in the Bible in uh, Genesis 23, 24, 25th chapter. So I request everybody to kindly go through after the class uh, uh, these uh, particular points uh, and the PDF thoughts also which we are sending. So here, yeah, just see, as uh, Ishmael was suffering in the wilderness and he was almost at the uh, point of death, so parallelly what is happening is that uh, Isaac is growing and the wedding of Isaac is getting prepared. A bride was selected. Her name is Rebecca. And how did uh, you see Abraham select uh, Rebecca? He did not want uh, his son to have a woman from his own nation, very far from the nation. You see, so he went to uh, Laban's house. You see, and he saw a beautiful virgin, and the name was Rebecca. And uh, you see, uh, how did uh, Eliezer identify Rebecca last week? Is no? Can anybody tell me how did uh, uh, Eliezer identify Rebecca that uh, she was? Uh, a blessed bride for Isaac. Can anybody tell me? Peter brother, Santosh brother, can you tell me? What was the identification of uh, Eliezer? Peter brother? Sorry. I was not there. Okay, no problem brother. Okay. Santosh brother, any idea? Do you have? Eliezer le pate Rebecca lai Rebecca nai te Isaac ko dei sri Srimati ho bhanera chai kasari chinyo bhanera sodnu bhayo cha ke wa le to ke chai chinna thiyo ta ke chinna dar chinyo bhanera sodnu bhayo sandha sir okay so not a problem so we'll see so it was uh, only uh, upon the interest of Rebecca giving water not only to Eliezer, but also to his uh, 10 camels. We know that the camels uh, usually, uh, if they drink water, they rarely drink, but if they drink water, it's uh, more than uh, 10, uh, you see, uh, you see, uh, this one's of uh, buckets of water. So, almost it was nearly around uh, uh, 500, uh, uh, you see, buckets of water that uh, Rebecca poured out for uh, those camels. Imagine a virgin, huh? a beautiful virgin, huh? that is a very engaged girl, will they do it? Nobody will do it, but uh, here, that was a beautiful character and identification of Rebecca. So, uh, that's how uh, Eliezer selected Rebecca and uh, uh, she travelled upon 10 camels uh, to meet Isaac. So, as soon as she met Isaac, from far away she saw Isaac and she got down from the camel and covered her face. Uh. So, uh, so this way, what happened? If you see in the Bible that uh, uh, both were married, Isaac and Rebecca, so their life continued. So there, parallelly, when Ishmael is suffering, here Isaac's marriage is getting place. So after all these things, uh, after the marriage of Isaac, uh, you see the Bible says that Abraham married the third time, mm -hmm. and this is uh, more interesting because. Nobody would believe that Abraham could marry the third time because first time itself he did not have any children. But uh, the third time he married and he got six children. So let us read Genesis 25th chapter 1 and 2. 
Can anybody read, brother? Peter, brother, Santosh, brother, can you read? Genesis 25, chapter 1 and 2. Genesis 26, chapter 1 and 2. 25. Oh, 25th sorry. chapter, verse 1 and 2. Okay, chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. Hmm. Then again, Abraham took a wife and her, her name was Ketruk. Ketura hmm. and she bear him Zimran and Jokson and Midan and Midian and Isabak and Suha. Very good. So here uh, you see Abraham married the third time and her wife's name was Ketura and uh, she begat him six sons uh, Zimran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua. Six sons. So Anybody, you see, uh, it will be very difficult for them to believe. Because, how is it possible? But yet it happened. So, what the significance does it got given? And what is the real meaning of this one? Why God has given so intricate uh, things to us in the Bible? We all know that Old Testament things, what all things happened there, uh, were the image of the things to come. So, image of the things to come in the New Testament. So, all the things of the Old Testament have got significance in the New Testament. So, that signifies uh, Christ. So, we already know that uh, Abraham signifies God and Isaac signifies Jesus. Then, whom does the wife of uh, Abraham represent? Does it mean that God has wife? What does it mean? Dear brethren, you see, the clue for it is given by Apostle Paul in Galatians 4, chapter 22 to 24. Okay, let us read Galatians 4, chapter 22 to 24. Santosh Padar, can you read Galatians 4, chapter verses 22 to 24? Is it possible for you to read in uh, English? Santosh Padar? Or else do you want to read in Nepali? Okay, uh, Peter brother, can you read? Colossi. Galatians 4, 22 to 24. 4, 22 to 24. Hmm. Galati. Okay. Equation. Okay. Chapter 4, hmm. 22. 22. Okay. From for, 22 it is that, uh, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, uh, the one by a uh, born maid and other by free woman. Uh, but he was, but he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh, but uh, he of the free woman uh, was by promise. Which things are on an allegory mm. for these are the two convenience, uh -huh. the one from the Mount Sinai who mm. gained mm. dread mm. and bondage, which is Agar. Agar. Very good. So, here uh, it clearly says that uh, Abraham had two sons, one from the bond woman, one from the free woman. We know that the two sons are. Uh, Isaac and Ishmael. No, one born from the free woman was from Sarah. Sarah begat Isaac. So he was a free huh, woman. Then, but there was a bond woman also. And it was Hagar. She was a servant. And through her, Ishmael was born. What does Apostle Paul say here? Apostle Paul says that these are two covenants. You see? So what is the meaning of covenant? If you see in the Bible, the covenant means agreement. You see, this day, these days, the name for the covenant is called as agreement. Now, why did uh, God make a agreement? You see, now what is the meaning of uh, agreement in the Bible? Now, why do God make covenants? You see, dear brethren, the first covenant which God made was with uh, Adam. You see, uh, that is given in Osea 6-7. Uh, that God uh, made a covenant with Adam and Adam broke that covenant. And we all know 
the third covenant uh, sorry the second covenant which god made was with noah when the whole world was uh, destroyed by the flood you see after the flood god kept uh, a rainbow in the sky and made a covenant with noah saying uh, henceforth i will not destroy this entire world by a flood so that was the second covenant you see and the token of covenant was a rainbow and the third covenant you see that god made was with abraham that uh, abraham was ready to sacrifice even his uh, uh, son isaac god uh, swore upon himself and said in thy seed shall all the nations of this world be blessed but i will definitely bless everybody so this was the important covenant which god made with abraham so telling that the whole world will be blessed see now the name for this covenant which god made with abraham you see we can give various names like for example the first name that could be given is abrahamic covenant why because it was made with abraham and god and the second name can be given as unconditional covenant unconditional covenant means what generally if you make agreement we have some conditions no like for example uh, if you take any house for rent they will put in agreement uh, this house we are giving on rent uh, giving on rent for what condition that they would stay as a family and uh, every month on fifth they will pay the rent so these are the conditions but here if you see when god made a covenant with abraham there was no condition god did not put any condition saying that if you do this i will do that no you have already are ready to offer your son isaac so henceforth i will definitely bless you he took a oath upon himself that means it was a unconditional no condition was required at all that means if the people do good or bad i'll definitely do good that's what it means and third one just because god made a oath upon himself he swore upon himself this can be called as a oath bound covenant and uh, just imagine huh? this uh, covenant also signifies grace grace means what there is no condition that you should do this you should do that even if you do if you don't do you shall sure be blessed so the grace huh? dear brethren therefore uh, god made this covenant now uh, before going uh, into this subject very deeply one point we should uh, remember and know what is the difference between the promise and the agreement okay now what is the meaning of promise huh? now what is the meaning of agreement huh? can anybody tell me peter brother can you tell me what is the meaning of promise and agreement is there any difference between agreement and promise brother promise and agreement hmm. okay promise uh, is the things which is uh, which in future is it has to come mm. given by other okay good and then and what another hmm what is the meaning Promise of agreement 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 is the things recently presently they uh, they uh, they just uh, make an agreement okay uh, promises for future agreement is present present okay. good but the good the good uh, thoughts but uh, one more thing i would like to add uh, is that you see uh, promise we also make promise no huh? i promise you that i will uh, definitely give you back uh, uh, your 10000 rupee i'll promise you that i'll give you next week your 10000 rupee back but uh, I may uh, not keep up a promise also. You see, that I may uh, tell, no, I can't, could, I could not give, give you. I'll give you one more week later. So that's the promise. Sir. But agreement means what? Uh, once if you make agreement that you should give 10,000 after one week, means that is a confirmation. No diversion, no changes at all. Dear Bhadran, you see, similarly, what God made with Abraham was not a promise. You see, but it was a binding agreement. That means definitely happen. Therefore, uh, when we, uh, you see, we do a lot of agreement. No? When we 
get a new vehicle na kind of agreement document is given from the company when you buy a house or property document is given why why everybody don't promise oh i promise you that this land is yours they get it in words na because they might change therefore dear brethren ah uh, so now let us come to this uh, subject three covenants okay this is the background now let us come to the subject now first of all apostle paul said in galatians 4 chapter the uh, the wives of abraham represents the covenants okay first of all now three wives are there so which are the three covenants first thing you see hagar so hagar is which covenant what does apostle paul say read galatians 424 brother peter brother please read galatians 424 ha huh? ಉಂಟೆ Here, Apostle Paul gives that Agar is a covenant. It is, which is that covenant? It tells uh, that represents uh, the Mount Sinai. Now, which uh, covenant did God make with Israel at uh, Mount Sinai? You see, which is the law that gave, you see, uh, through Moses, uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, you see, so here, that uh, law covenant which god made with people of israel that is what uh, is represented by agar now imagine as soon as abraham married agar immediately who was born huh? ishmael was born so similarly once when god made the law covenant uh, you see immediately the jewish nation was born under the law everybody came under the law as a uh, Ishmael was with uh, Agar. But uh, Apostle Paul also tells uh, one more thing. You see, that uh, Abraham had two sons, it seems, two wives. That means two covenants also there. Now, who is uh, Sarah? What does Sarah represent? Read Galatians 4.26, brother. Read with her. Galatians 4.26. Uh. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. which is the mother of osal ah so there is uh, one more you see a uh, covenant sara and she is a free woman she is not a servant to men so what does apostle paul here say so there is a jerusalem which is above which is free who is the mother of osal it seems that means jerusalem is compared to a mother now which is the heavenly jerusalem You see, we all know it is mentioned in Revelation twenty-one two. Uh, Apostle John said, "No, I saw a heavenly Jerusalem which come down from heaven." Uh, read, brother. Revelation twenty-one two, brother. Read, brother. Can you read? Hmm. Hmm. Revelation twenty-one two. Peter, brother, can you read? Revelation twenty one two. Okay. Revelation twenty one two. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared hmm. as a bride, hmm. see, adorned. for our husband husband see heavenly jerusalem come out from heaven so this is the bride of jesus christ aha uh-huh. that means there is heavenly jerusalem which is the heavenly jerusalem that is none other than the church read brother hebrews 12 23 brother hebrews 12 23 brother ha uh-huh. hebrews 12 23 hmm. Okay, Hebrews twelve and twenty. 
the to the general assembly and charge of the firstborn which are written in heaven uh -huh. and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just man made perfect see brother clearly it says now brother huh? the church of uh, firstborn which are written in heaven that means here the heavenly jerusalem represents the church you see who promised the heavenly salvation therefore here that uh, sara and uh, isaac represents uh, you see the covenant originally god had made and uh, under hit you see uh, isaac was born so this represents the church read brother galatians 428 brother galatians 428 mm. class since 428 well, 422 28 oh sorry okay now we brethren as isaac was are the children of promise very clearly given now. Now we breathe mm. as Isaac was, mm. are the children of promise. We are like Isaac, it seems. Sir. Therefore, this represents, uh, you see, the church. Uh, you see, therefore, remember, Abraham, uh, what was he promised? Uh, he was promised two types of blessings. I'll make your seat as a stand of the you see, seashore and uh, stars of the Sky. So here the stars of the skies represents uh, by Sarah and Sarah's uh, child Isaac. Now remember uh, Abraham's story. Abraham loved Sarah very much than Hagar. So similarly, God loved this covenant. Which covenant? The oath bond covenant. I made a promise upon myself that in thy seed all the nations will be blessed. That was the most loving of uh, covenants. Uh, that was the most dear of all the covenants to God uh, because he loved it so much. Uh. And uh, you see, the brethren, uh, there what happened uh, as uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah were married, there was no result, no child was born. So immediately when God promised that in thy seed I shall bless all the nations of the world, was the whole world blessed? Uh? No. There was no result. There was no chances and no sight of blessings at all. No world was blessed. It remained the same. So, time went on. So, as the time went on, so what happened there? Abraham married the second time. Who? Immediately, he married Agar. So, as soon as Agar was born, eh? see, as soon as Agar was married, eh? Ishmael was born. So, similarly, once uh, when this promise was delayed, God added the law covenant in between. So once uh, law covenant came, the people of Israel, uh, you see, they came, the 12 tribes of nation, they came into existence. But what did they do? They began to persecute uh, hmm? who? Isaac. So the Jewish people persecuted Jesus and killed him. Read Galatians 4.29 and uh, 20. 30 with her. Galatians 4, 29 and 30 with her. Huh? But as then he what was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Hmm. Ne neither the less, uh, never the less what said the scripture cast out the born woman and her son. For the son of the born woman shall not be higher with the son of the free woman. Mm -hmm. See? That's those days. How Ishmael persecuted Isaac, even so it is now. The true church is being persecuted. So, uh, the both can't live together. So, what did God do there? Told him to diverse. So, similarly, God divorced uh, this law covenant. That means he put away the law covenant. Uh, you see, but uh, uh, once the Jewish people were cast out, once the law covenant was 
you see completely cast out what happened there was a very tough time for ishmael and hagar ishmael was almost at the death but at the dying moment he cried and lord saved him so similarly today we can see that the nation of israel is in a very tough situation very war like situation almost at the verge of death but will god leave the nation of israel no as god showed an angel and through that angel uh, he got the water from the well and god said and became a tall tribe similarly the new jewish nation also shall be blessed you see they have suffered a lot uh, during the second world war during the holocaust uh, during the you see hitler's uh, reign you see dear brethren but yet uh, god did not leave them god would save them by giving them the water or the truth uh, you see and they shall also be saved uh, Uh huh. Now read Zechariah fourteen two and three, brother. Zechariah fourteen chapter two and three, brother. Huh. Zechariah fourteen two and three. Two to four. Ah. Uh. Two and three, verse two and three. Okay, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, mm. and the city shall be taken, mm. and the houses ref refelled, and the women uh, revised, mm. and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, wow. and the uh, and the residue. Of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Hmm. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight hmm. against those nations, hmm. as when He fought in the day of the battle. Aha! Uh -huh. See what does the Bible say? In the future, uh, all nations shall gather against Israel. Half of the Israel shall go into captivity. Israel will be in the verge of complete destruction. But how will God save them? As He saved Israel in the olden days, how God fought for Israel, how God saved Hagar and Ishmael, almost at dying moment, water was given. Similarly, the whole Israel will be huh, saved. This is the future. Now let us come to this picture again. Here, as uh, Ishmael was suffering, Isaac's marriage was getting place. So similarly, today Israel is suffering a lot. But the church selection is going on. Uh huh. Who is the church? We are the church. So selection is going on. The truth is going all over the world. But as soon as uh, uh, Isaac and Rebecca get married, Abraham marries for a third time. What does this signify? Huh? Marrying the third time and begetting six children. Ah, uh, that means there is going to be a third covenant. Now, if you tell that Abraham. Beget uh, three children at the age of uh, nearly one hundred twenty years. Will anybody believe? No. Similarly, God is going to make a beautiful covenant, a uh, covenant of Ketura, in the thousand years. And that is a very new thing to the whole world. Read, brother. Jeremiah thirty-first chapter, thirty-one to thirty-four, brother. Jeremiah th chapter thirty-one, thirty-one to thirty-four, brother. Thirty first chapter. Thirty first chapter. Thirty one to thirty four. First. Chapter thirty first verse. Thirty one to thirty four. Thirty one to thirty four. Okay. Mm. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. With the houses of Israel mm. and with the house of Judah, mm. not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Uh huh. Which See, make of... yeah, which... yeah. What does God say? I am going to make a new covenant, but this new covenant is not going to be like the old covenant. The old law covenant, which they came out from Israel. Which I gave out uh, 
Mount Sinai, they broke it. None of the Israel could keep it. Now next continue with it. What does he say? Huh? Okay. To bring them of the land of Egypt, which, uh, which my covenant they broke, all, although I was an, an husband unto them, hmm. said the Lord. Hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the houses of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Ah, we'll see, God. this covenant, brother, it will be different. First time he had given upon the tablets, the Ten Commandments, but this covenant, now what is going to happen in the future, God is going to write in the hearts. How God is going to write in the hearts? What is the changes? You see, continue, it says, huh? And See, will be uh, their okay, sorry. Read, 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 please, please read. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man this never, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, mm -hmm. said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember, I will remember their sin no more. See, brother, what is there? God will write it upon their hearts. In such a way, there is no need for one to go and tell that you should know God. From the least even to the greatest, everybody shall know the Lord, it seems, brother. Now, this is the new covenant. Therefore, the old law covenant and the new covenant is different. You see, Hagar is different when compared to Keturah. Agar was a servant, but Ketura is not a servant. You know, six children were born to Ketura. What does the six children represent? Sir? That means that represents the 6,000 years of mankind who lived, who will be resurrected in Christ's second coming. They will all come to the knowledge of Christ. Now, if you take this one, what will the people say? They will laugh. How can, how is this possible? How will the whole world be resurrected? How will the whole world come back to, and accept Christ as a savior? You see, they will laugh. Uh, dear brethren, how they laughed at uh, Abraham. How is it possible for him to get married and uh, to Ketra and beget six sons? It was a surprise. Similarly, the whole world, for them, a thousand years salvation from, from Christ is a surprise. They will laugh. But that's what the name Ketura means. Ketura means incense. A beautiful, you see, a good smelling aroma. You see, in the thousand years, imagine then all the dead coming back to life and living on the same earth in the same flesh. What good it will be. What beautiful it will be. This is what God has promised. So, here, the three wives represent the three important covenants. And the three children born to them represents the three category of people. First, Isaac represents the church. Ishmael represents the Israel. The six sons of Ketu represents the whole rest of mankind. So, dear brethren, so this uh, how in the Bible, the type and antitype in Abraham's life is beautifully given. Okay? So, if you have any doubts, any questions, you can ask. So, I'll be sending the notes to you. And a YouTube link, so request you to please go through it. So any questions you have, you can 